Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are celebrating Epiphany Sunday today. Technically it was on Wednesday, but this is, you have a choice then. Do you go before or after? And I chose to go after because I wanted to sing or hum, I guess, more Christmas carols last week. So next week is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, but today it's the festival of Epiphany for us here at Creator. We give thanks to God for God's presence in our life and gathering us here to worship either in person or for the majority of us on Facebook or YouTube or Zoom or all the other ways that we have found to gather in God's word. For those of you who are at home, um, there'll be something mailed out to you later after the service that we will be doing here in person as well. And also, if you would like to commune, make sure you have your bread and either wine or grape juice ready for communion at the end of the service so that you can participate in that as well. For those of you who are here, some of the, the reality of being in the midst of COVID means that we are six feet apart from different COVID families and groups, but that also we don't share peace in person. We stand up and you can make eye contact and share peace that way. And also we'll be humming during the songs rather than singing. It's just part of that reality right now. And also for the communion, those of you who haven't used those cups before, when we get to that part, it'll be after the, the Lord's prayer that you'll undo two seals. The first seal get you, gets you to the bread and the second seal gets you to the grape juice. I think those are, and then afterwards also due to COVID, we do ask you to, rather than congregate and have that magnetism that you get closer and closer together, we do ask you to, to make your way outside as well. Oh, and one last thing, speaking outside, we did take down that fir tree and somebody has come and split all those huge rounds that were left. So if any of you wanna bring wood home today, you're welcome to do that. And if any of you at home would like some wood, as long as there's wood out there, come and claim it or come and claim it and then give it to somebody who needs it so that we um, can move that on and get it starting to dry in somebody's house that could use it when it's dry or if in real need, even now. Um, I also wanted to say that we've had a really, last week we did our car, ca car caravan. We had about six or seven cars, our households from Creator go to six or seven, I don't know if it was six or seven cars or six or seven homes, or, but, but or the last, we went to about six or seven homes and just drove through and got out of the cars and stood around, stood away from each other, but then gave prayer and presence and just brought the love of Creator through all parts of our community here. And for me, even though it was raining, it was one of the best days of the last few months to just be there. I know the Knickerbockers. Yep. Yep. You were like before it rained too, so it was even better for you. But just that, that ability. So if you would like a visit, or if you would like to be part of the next caravan, we're going to wait until we have a critical number of enough houses, enough people to drive to do another one, especially in these months where we're still going to be in this time of distancing and waiting for enough vaccine and enough care in the community to move down those numbers. We also had a Jumanji escape room last night with their fellowship ministry, and it was a lot of fun to, to have that time together and see some people who we haven't seen in a while. I think my final kind of plug is because of our YouTube, Facebook, Zoom realities, if you could su subscribe to our YouTube channel, if we get enough, there's some metrics there that if we have enough subscribers, there's another option for some streaming that might be a little bit easier for us. So if you can um, find where we have all of that archive services and, and devotions that we do and subscribe to that, we also now have an Instagram page. I think myself and the church are the two following Instagram right now. It's brand new. So if you can find us on Instagram as well, that Marion has begun that. And it's just another way to get more and more of our congregation connected with one another. I think those are our main announcements. Our gathering song to sing at home or hum in person is We Three Kings.
Please rise as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath from heaven. Let us confess our sinfulness before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret, and we have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures, and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ is the Savior is born. You are loved, and I declare to you that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who has come among us. You are freed from providing, proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. We'll do it, the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thanks for following me in the middle there. <laughs> Let us continue their litany. We give thanks on this holy day, adorned with epiphanies for the star that led the Magi to the Major, that the nations may see the light of Christ, for the water turned to wine at the Cana's wedding. We taste the goodness of the Lord. For the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Jordan. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. You may be seated. It's always challenging to do a children's sermon when it's only my own child and the rest of them are at home watching. But sometimes a children's sermon is also for the big kids too. So the reality is, is this time of year, the today or Wednesday was the day of epiphany that we remember how the, the magi, the wise people came all the way from a far off land to bring gifts to Jesus, to bring gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, to, sh to pay homage, which is a fancy word that can mean to recognize him as a king but also to worship him. And these gifts that they brought him were a way of remembering how he was royal. That's the gold. The frankincense was remembering his divinity and the myrrh, his suffering or his humanity. So it was gifts to actually prepare Jesus for the one thing that Jesus could do that none of us can do. And that is to die for us, to be our savior. And that was the gift the ultimate the gift that Christ gives us. So we are also called to give gifts, not to God. The gifts we give to God really are our sin and our brokenness and everything that's wrong with us. That's what we give to God, kids. But what, who needs our gifts isn't God. It's our neighbor. Our neighbors need our gifts. There's a story, and I'm not going to read it all because it's way too long for a time, but if you want to find a story to read to your kids, the story of the other wise men. And it's a story of the fourth wise person, and who knows how many wise people there really were, 
for the fourth wise person that had a sapphire, a ruby, and a pearl that he had planned or she had planned to give to Jesus in Bethlehem. But on the way to try to get those gifts to Jesus, this person found other people in need. And so as they were trying to rush to join the other wise people to go to the long journey to Bethlehem, what the wise person found was somebody who needed some help. And so they gave their ruby or their sapphire, whichever one was first, to pay for this person's need as they were not eating enough and they, were, they, were, they needed help. And so the wise person sold the, the ruby so that the person could have help. And then they were behind and he, he wasn't able to join the other wise people on the journey and was sad. But then he kept, he, he got another camel and went across the desert and found Bethlehem. But by then the Holy Family had fled to Egypt because there were some scary things happening in Bethlehem. And while he's in Bethlehem, those scary things happened. And so he sold his other, I think it was a sapphire, to make a person safe so that bad people wouldn't hurt them. And he saved his family in a house. So then he went to Egypt to follow and meet Jesus and was there for a long time and finally decided to come back to Jerusalem 30 years later. Well, we, I think, know what happened 30 years later. That's when Jesus came to die. And as he was dying, right before he died, this man met another person who had a need. And he had one last pearl. And this woman was going to go to jail if somebody didn't pay her ransom. So he took the one last gift that he had for Jesus that he had saved for 30 years and gave it away. So this woman would be able to not go to jail. And at that moment, the story says, everything was dark and Jesus breathed his last. And the man was so sad that he found out that Jesus, who he had wanted his whole life to meet, had just died. But then guess what? There's a story in Matthew about the sheep and the goats and how we don't know when we're going to meet the people that God wants us to meet. And when we do for the least people in our lives, the people who are hungry, the people who are scared, the people who are going through really hard times and we give gifts to them and we help them and we care for them, we are actually caring for Jesus. And we're giving those gifts that God has given us to other people in need. And that's where our gifts are needed the most in the world. It might not be a pearl, a sapphire, and a ruby. I don't have those three things, do any of you? But I do have my hands to help people. I have my time. I have my resources. I have my intellect. I have the gifts that God has given me that I can use. And when I see somebody in need, I can help them. Or I can write to them. Or I can call them. And that's the best thing we can do as Christians to share our gifts. They're not going to save us. That's what Jesus does. He gives us that gift that we can't give on our own. But what we can do is help other people know that God loves them too and know that they can, they're not alone in getting through the day. So today what we're going to do is we're going to receive gifts in our star word. So today, if you want to advance, John, the next slide. Or Virginia, sorry. This is something we did last year, and it's become more and more churches do something called star words. And it's, it's, it's a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of fun. And it's a lot of me writing words on stars while I watch Seahawks games because there wasn't much more to do, right? It was a long game yesterday. But we're not good at receiving. So in order to give, in order to be poured out in the world and help one another, we also come here to receive. We receive God's word. We receive God's blessing. We receive God's forgiveness and mercy. And then we're sent out to be aware of the people in our world, in our lives, where we can support and give and, and be present to. So what we've done is on the altar here, I have an envelope for every family of creator and our visitors as well, so that you know, it's a, it's a word written on a, let's see if I can find an empty one, like last year. It's a word written on a wooden star. 
Last year, my husband had the word surrender, perfect COVID word. I had, um, I think I had positivity, <laughs> an interesting word to live into during 2020. So I invite you as you receive this, and, and it, there's a letter attached to, to make of it what's helpful to you. It's not meant to be a burden, it's meant to be a gift, a word to kind of reflect on and and see what God might be saying to you through the year, what God might be calling you into, how God might be present to you during 2021. Because today is a day of gifts, of recognizing the gift that God has given us and the gift that God has given us to go out into the world so that we can be gifts to one another as well. So let us continue with our star prayer. God, we acknowledge that we are not always ready to receive your best gifts for us. We have been given an epiphany word, or we will get one, in order that we, that our searching will bring us to you. It is often our habit to turn aside, stumble over, or even reject experiences and encounters that will later understand that we have got these precious gifts. Help us to be open to the lens that this word might offer for the year ahead. Help us not to not only ponder the gift of our star word, but to also, but also your son, the word made flesh in our hearts so that our hearts are changed by you. We acknowledge that we do not fully understand what this word might mean for our faith, but we receive it from you with gratitude and pray that your Holy Spirit will enable us to live into our word with intention and faithfulness. For those who are here today, I do have a word for you to take home with you today. And the rest of you for in creator land, you'll be happy receiving those in the mail within the next week. So let us continue with our reading. The first reading is from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Please rise as you are able for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler 
who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they sent out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another word, road. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This Wednesday was a day to remember. It was the Feast of Epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation of God. There's a little bit of ironing there for me. Manifestation of God is what epiphany means, how God is made manifest for us, how God is made present for us. It's one of these weeks where it's really hard to know how to preach, because I'm reeling, I think, as well as everybody else, over what has been made manifest in our nation's capital in the last week. What has happened there? And what is our call as a church What is our call as a people of God? How is God being made known in this time and in this place? And especially with a text like this, it would be so easy to point fingers and to judge and to rule on a side of where's right and where's wrong and to speculate and to jump ahead of a lot of things that frankly don't correspond to me as a pastor, as a preacher. What is the thing that I can give each of you that I need myself right now? the comfort of our Lord, the assurance that we have a God who is Lord of Lords and King of the universe of the right and the left kingdom of us and has us in God's hands and won't let us go. The text makes that a little tricky, but I think part of that is because some of these things that happen in our text today are on repeat in the history of the world. Again and again, we will face sin and we will face corporate challenges as a body, as a nation, as a people, as a church, but then also individual reality of sin and brokenness. And they both are hard and they both are challenging and they both are present each and every day of our lives. But so is our Lord. And as we see at the very end of this text that we read, before the Holy Family flee to Egypt to escape with their lives, that the Magi, the holy, the wise ones that came that day, what they did is they went home by another way. So as we have a manifestation of God's glory, as we have a manifestation on God's on, on our capital, which is the way that God would have us go? Is there another way that God is calling us to as the people of God? And I would say yes, because in Christ, when Christ came to be in our midst, when what Christ came to die, another way was made available. The way of the cross, the way in which God does it for us and then frees us from our sin and our brokenness and also names us in it because we try to wiggle out of it all the time. So let's dive into our text a little bit and see what God has to say for us today. So the context of Matthew chapter two, it's how Matthew talks about Christ's birth, is it's in the time of Herod, a king, a ruler put there by the Romans to to rule over Judea. He was legitimate. He had the reason to be there. He wasn't a very good person. 
He harmed people. He wanted to stay in power. He did anything he could to figure that out. And now he finds out that there is a prophecy that has become real, that there's a star that has come and there's a transition of power that's about to happen, and Herod is not having it. He wants to stay as king of Judea. And so he's frightened. And his fear ripples out into all of Jerusalem as they're worried about how he would react, what this could mean for them in this transition that is to come. So he brings his cabinet together, the chief priests and the scribes, and he tries to leverage what they know to figure out the exact place that this is going to happen so that he can hold on to it, so that he can use that as leverage to keep in his place. And then the wise men come and he finds a further way to try to plot, to rewrite history the way he wants it written. And he finds out the exact time that star went. So he knows the age range that this child, this future king would be. He uses manipulation, he uses lies, he uses plotting as many historic figures have done over time and will continue to do over time. And yet, the story doesn't end there, does it? The wise men are sent, ironically, under the royal mandate and the passage of safety by Herod. So they're able to go and worship Christ. Herod helped that happen. I don't think that was his hope. But God sometimes, maybe more often than we realize, works in the midst of things we wouldn't understand or why, so that God's will is done. God is manifest in the most unlikely places. And here is Jesus, the king of the Jews, the king of kings. And he's not what Herod or any of us expected the way he would rule either. As he grows up, he is not there to take over the seat of Jerusalem and put a crown of gold on his head and rule as we would expect. But he did upset pretty much every power of the time then and every time since by bringing a message of love, by bringing the naming of our brokenness and our sin to us and not being the kind of king that we expected. So while he didn't seat, sit himself on the throne in Jerusalem, he did change all of the civil and religious authorities of that time and every time since. And that day that the wise people finally met him in Bethlehem, maybe they knew, maybe they didn't know, but things were already changing. Because throughout most of the Old Testament, there's a promise that for the sake of all nations, this child would be born, the Messiah would come. But it really had stayed in the people of Israel. And just in that small chosen people, but already in this beginning of Matthew, in these first visitors that proclaim Christ's birth, things are changing and another way is being shown because now Gentiles, people outside the chosen people of God are bringing, being brought into that promise, are being told that this child is born for you as well. And the promise is expanding and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But so often we want it to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And we don't want to be named in our need for that kind of savior. We want a God who will come in and show us with power and might and put us straight and give us a new law and put us in order. But what God instead is give us the gift of his very life. The very gifts, as we said earlier, that the, the Magi came to bring was for his preparation for burial. A king who comes not to submit us into place, but to take our place for us, to provide another way than the ones that we have well worn in the history of time. It'd be easy to say that Herod, with Herod, everything ended, and after Jesus' death, there was no longer tyrants in the world. There were no longer people and systems of violence in the world that would make us fall short. 
but the evidence before us and what we've lived in our lives just show the opposite. It shows that we are still in a struggle between which way we would have. And so often we choose the one that secures us, that makes us just, that makes us right on our own. I've been, over this last year, it's been remarkable to me that no matter what the manifestation, as me, the minute there's violence in it, all of a sudden we start free framing and rewriting and try to say the violence isn't us. We are in the right. We are in the, the just. Our purpose and our call is true and God worthy and therefore God should bless us and have all the changes go out before us and all those other things that are happening on the fringes, that's not us until it is. Because each and every one of us fall short. Each and every one of us have our Herod moments in which we want to be secure. We want to be comfortable at all cost. Law abiding being justified by the law has no wiggle room, none at all. And that's a hard word to hear. But the truth of the matter is, while we hope that the world is getting better, the evidence shows that we will continually have need, that we will continually have brokenness, that we will continually fall short corporately as a country, as a congregation, as a people, but also individually, we will continue to fall short. And that's stark. And that's hard to hear. But we need to hear that part that we can't do it on our own. That we will be swept up in the mob if it's coming by and that current is strong enough and we will fall short and we will hurt one another again and again and again. And some of it will because there's evil in the world at work. And we can name that, that there is evil in the midst of even righteous reasons that co-ops them and takes them in different directions and causes even more harm. We have all fallen short. We are sinful. We are flawed. There are dark forces in the world and they continue to be in the world, okay? But that's not the end of the story. Christ comes to bring another way. And that other way is that everything is in God's hands. All of the fears that we felt this last week of wondering of, we haven't seen this since what, 18 something that this happened in our nation's capital. I had tears myself, I'm sure many of you did, wondering what's gonna happen between now and the 20th, I don't know, you don't know, God does. And in that we can trust. There's another way too, that while we are broken and while sometimes our motivations are gonna be wrong, we are called, like I said in the children's sermon, to be poured out for the sake of our neighbors. When they are suffering, to be moved and live our lives in a way that does seek to make somebody's life better, more just, more fair, represented as equally as ours. And that is a battle that we will face every day of our lives and we will disagree on, and then we will come and we will be given the other way of forgiveness. Because Christ will continually make us into those peacemakers rather than the war makers. And God will continually be our wisdom, speaking on through and in us, through acts of love, giving us trust and giving us faith, giving us himself. Because while the world isn't gonna get better, we're gonna have challenges all the time and we will not figure it out on our own. Christ gives another way. And that way is that on the cross, Christ defeated sin, death, and the devil. Christ defeated all that defies God in each and every one of you and in me. And that will continue to defy God and to continue to not be justified in the law, to continue to be selfish, continue to be all these things that are part of humanity. 
But we also know the end of the story. And that is resurrection. A new way of life, a new way of hope, a new way of God being present in all this fear and worry. And we can laugh and we can have fun and we can be joyful because we know that because of Christ's resurrection, we can stare in the face of evil, whether it's Herod or whether it comes by another name. And we can say, you don't win. You don't win over my life. You don't live over, win over my neighbor's life. You don't win over my enemy's life. The Herods of the world do not win because Christ has given us another way. And we are called into that way but Christ does the one thing that we can't do along the way is create the new way. Christ has created a new way for us. It's a forgiveness and it's of mercy and it's of peace. And it is Christ's gift for us that is poured out upon each and every one of us because boy, do we need it. And it doesn't get used up. When we're exhausted, Christ continues to pour love into our lives. When we don't know what to do next, God provides our neighbor that has a need and we will be used up for the sake of the neighbor. And then God provides a word that does conflict us. None of us escapes from that today. And I hope you feel that a little bit today. None of us can say it's all of them that are doing that. We are them, they are us. We all have a need for this Lord and thanks be to God that Lord then comes in a manifestation of glory, in a manifestation of life, in a manifestation that comes when we need it most. And we can be thankful that the God we worship has us and holds us and will never let us go. All of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
didn't get to three of you, I'll get to you after worship, okay? Please rise as you are able for our confession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all according to our needs. Dear and gracious God, as you are made manifest to us in your Son, as our forgiveness, as our mercy, as our new way to live free of fear, trusting that you are present in our every moment, we ask you to send us out to care for one another, to be gifts of love and hope and possibility. And then continue to strengthen us, Lord, with your love and that forgiveness that we need each day. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray for this next few weeks in our country and the transitions of power and the complications that we are in the midst of. Bless each and every one of our elected officials and those who are working in this time of transition. We thank you for their vocation and their service, and we ask you to bless us as you have promised in these ways through these officials and through our government. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we ask you to be with those in our community in need of your care. We pray for Nancy and Nancy, for Jay and Fred and Tatiana, for Aldena and Mary, for Pat, for Susan, for Cal, for Carol, for Diane, for Ken, for Don and Betty, for Janice, for James, for Merritt. We also pray for Jack and Sandy, for Michael, for Vicki and Kathy and Shirley and Les, for Jean and Gina, for Sharon, for Jill, for Mary, for the family of Jack, and all those we raise up to you this moment and this time, silently or aloud. Be made manifest in each of these beloved children of yours life, Lord. May your light shine in the darknesses that they are experiencing right now, and may you see them through. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we ask you to bless Creator Lutheran Church and Preschool. Thank you for the ministry of place in our hands, and bless our members as we are sent out to be the body of Christ in the world. May you continue to strengthen us and comfort us in these times. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. For offering, I want to say thank you for your generosity with Creator and our ministry and the mission into, in this church and in the greater community. 
We've been putting together right now our what we're thankful for and also our preparing for our January 31st celebration that we have every year. This year it will be a little different, but we have a lot to celebrate. And partly that is in, because of, of your generosity. It's all because of God, but your generosity and your faithfulness has made a difference this last year. So the ways to give to Creator are leave an offering while you're in church, mail it in. They're also in our website or the Give Plus app. You can give that way or directly through your, your account to church. It makes a difference, and it also allows us to do the outreach in the world as well. So let us pray together our offering prayer. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of the earth that become the great meal of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And while we can't sing along with this one, if you want to be more like a, a child in this, you're welcome to put your little finger up and do a little light of mine. As we, and then after those of you who haven't been in worship in person, after it's the sending song, it's, it's sending song because we can't sing towards the end but we'll have communion after ascending song. So let us hum and sing away. I can't clap and sing at the same time, but I think I can hum and clap maybe. So that I should have tried that this time. A little bit of joy for our day as we now receive God fully for us, the, the inheritance that we have of mercy in this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, sharing our life. He lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise their name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now you may take your communion, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you. And if it's easier to be seated, you may be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, you grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that we love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is bo born. Go tell it on the mountain and everywhere. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. <laughs>